Hello and welcome to the Real Life Show, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jonathan. It's a platform where we get to engage, interact, you know, learn from icons, gurus, moguls, trendsetters, trailblazers, <laughs> difference makers, and all changes, you know, I'm talking about. And sitting next to me is a pretty lady, you know, uh, from the service industry or the service field. I like to call her the, the queen of customer service, Elizabeth yeah. Mwandila, <laughs> a.k.a. Okay, my crush, right? <laughs> Liz, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. How are, How are you? you doing today? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Yes. So, so I, I was asking you a question before you came. Mm -hmm. Did you come for an interview or you just came to murder me on my show? <laughs> Look at your makeup. Man. What's happening? Mm, I'm going for a wedding after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. So, Elizabeth, you, you write at cause you're mm -hmm. into service, you're mm -hmm. a service manager, yes. you, you have rich experience in the service space mm -hmm. and you have an inspirational story mm -hmm. that you share pieces of it mm -hmm. on Facebook and people have been following you for the longest time now. Mm -hmm. But then they, they, they haven't gotten to hear you speak and share your story on a platform mm -hmm. like this one that's true. and that's the reason why I called you. So mm -hmm. who is Elizabeth? Where do you come from? Okay, so um, Elizabeth was born on the Copper Belt. Yeah. Uh, I come from a family of six, mm. one brother, five sisters, yeah. um, pretty much my upbringing was on the copper belt, mm. uh, school up to grade 12. I only came to Lusaka after I completed my grade 12, mm -hmm. but my, my family is on the copper belt. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a um, smooth sailing yeah. childhood, I yeah. must say. Mm, I think I have written about one or two. Uh, of the challenges that we faced growing up, uh, mm. dad losing his job, and mom being the only working parent in the home, mm. and what that translated, for, um, what that strain translated into the family, mm. like financially. Mm. So I have not grown up with a golden spoon or golden fork, no. We were pretty much raised on scarcity. Okay. But by God's grace, here we are. Yes. So how do you describe yourself? Someone who comes from a middle class family? Mm. Not poor, definitely. <laughs> Not poor. Yeah. Okay, yes, I can say middle class, the lower end of the middle class. Mm. Yes. Um, so what are some of the challenges that, that you faced when, mm -hmm. when, when, your, when your father lost employment? Was mm -hmm. the marriage still as stable as it was before that happened? Okay, yes, um, I must say my mom is a phenomenal woman yeah. because even after he lost his job, they, they, they are still together, mm -hmm. so she still managed to hold the, the home together and be there as we grew up and yeah. be able to be the working parent. We did have to participate here and there because they now ventured into other businesses Mm. like the chicken rearing business where we had to participate going to the farms we have to participate also selling vegetables you've been to the farm yes this skin has been to the farm <laughs> yes it has if okay. you look at me now perhaps it would be hard for you to believe but yes we would go to the farm apply fertilizer be it weeding mm. all those things have uh, things that have things that have happened those are things that I have gone through uh, mm. growing up. Beautiful. Yes. And then school? High school? Uh, high school and was college. also in Chingola. Mm. High school was in Chingola. So I went to Kabundi High School. Mm. And then from there, I went to Ibnon College, mm. where I did my diploma in marketing. OK. Yes. So as a kid growing up, did you see yourself? Was this service thing an ambition for you? Or you just bumped into it along the way? Mm. Mm -hmm. I bumped into it along the way. I never thought this is the path I was going to take. Yeah. As far as I was concerned, I remember being a young girl and my aspiration was to become a journalist. Okay. So I would be in the mirror. Hi, this is Elizabeth reporting <laughs> from BBC. <laughs> but unfortunately, mom picked marketing for me. Okay. So it's something we laugh about now. I'm like, mm. ma, I would have been working from the uk office or something of that sort <laughs> being a news anchor yeah yes but you know she she said according to the way she looked at me mm -hmm. 
and my personality. Mm -hmm. She was very convinced as a parent that I would thrive in the marketing space mm -hmm. because it was easy for me to, to convince. Like I told you, we used to yeah. sell things growing up. Yeah. So I would go to the market, maybe we were selling chicken. Mm. So yeah, literally sweet talking the customer, yeah. asking them to come because there are a lot of you who are lined up with your baskets. Yeah. Everyone is selling chicken, so we would be there. Please mm. come, this, that just battering them and yeah. be able to go back home with an empty basket after having made so many sales. Yes. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, for the sake of inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, I want us to run, uh, I, wanna, I want you to run us through mm -hmm. your journey of employment. Okay. You know, from your first job okay. to now mm -hmm. as manager, stroke, founder of something that we're going to get into details later, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just, uh, Run us through that, mm -hmm. your CV. Okay, so I started working in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is immediately after college. Like I said, I did my squat evening on college. Mm -hmm. And for my first job, I worked at Varun Beverages, which is Pepsi, mm -hmm. where I worked for three years. Mm -hmm. And up to this day, I remain grateful yeah. for what that company stood for then. I, I believe they should still stand by it by now as yeah. well where they were able to target fresh graduates mm -hmm. without any work experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure one or two out there might have uh, encountered one or two bumps in the road as it pertains to job hunting, where employers are looking for experience. Yeah. But if you're coming straight out of college <laughs> school, or uni, yeah. where are you getting the experience from? Yeah. So they really did give me that platform for mm -hmm. me to start my career. So. I worked uh, for Pepsi that was for three years, mm. selling soft drinks, yes, on back of a truck, <laughs> mixing flavors. <laughs> I still have witnesses who can stand and testify to this day. Yeah. So I remember working from Matero, that used mm. to be my, my sales territory, mm. that was my area. Everything from placing fridges, cooler boxes, interacting with, uh, with the marketeers and just building relationships and establishing that rapport and growing that customer base. Mm. Then after three years, I left Pepsi mm. and I went to MTN. Okay. At that particular time, I told myself to say I had learned mm. how to sell a product, yeah. but now I wanted to learn how to sell a service. Mm. And that's when I went to MTN. I worked in the MTN cost center mm. for eight months. Mm until the time that it was outsourced. Okay. I left, was jobless for two weeks. <laughs> yes, God has yeah. been so kind. Yeah. I was jobless for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Then after that two weeks, I then joined uh, FNB mm -hmm. as a call center agent. Yeah. I worked there for six months. Mm -hmm. Then I got promoted. I moved into the branch mm -hmm. where I worked as customer service advisor mm -hmm. for four years. Mm -hmm moved from commercial branch and went to biz, um, corporate and investment banking. CIB guys, CIB. corporate, <laughs> the, 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 big department, the big boys. Yes, yeah. then I went to um, yeah, corporate and investment banking where I was um, for about two years, six months, mm -hmm. circa, somewhere around there. And then I left FNB last year. Yeah. Around this time, I remember this is the time I was doing my <laughs> goodbyes. It yeah. will be almost a year from the time that I left. Yeah and moved to One Life, yeah. the former Metropolitan Insurance, where I'm currently working as the customer service manager. Great stuff, yes. great stuff. Mm. Now, that's, that's a rich CV right there. Thank uh, you. And I have mad respect for you because you, you. You, 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 you are an example of um, a powerful, successful, determined, focused you know, <laughs> lady. Thank you. Uh, but, but what did you say uh, the secrets to elevation and mm -hmm. growth in a mm -hmm. company? Mm -hmm. Look at those promotions. Yes. And you kept leaving me at some point. You, 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 mm -hmm. You're my boss, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, you kept on moving from my supervisor mm -hmm. to the manager to far away. Now, now you're untouchable. <laughs> well, what's okay. the secret to... Okay. Um, I will say hard work. Yeah. Definitely hard work where we need to be on the table mm -hmm. as well as something that I honestly swear by which yeah. is consistency. Okay. Jonathan, I believe consistency has been able to propel me to where I am now mm -hmm. and what I always say is 
if someone was to walk in on a Monday, mm -hmm. the way I interact with them, the way I handle them, mm -hmm. should be able to tally to what another person is going to say about me yeah. deep, um, as it pertains to our interaction. Yeah. So you want to be consistent. You don't want to be very good today and then be very cranky tomorrow because mm -hmm. now you've got two conflicting personalities and people don't know where to place you. Yeah. So you want to stand your firm ground and be very consistent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the moment they mention your name, let them mention if it's efficiency, mm. let them mention efficiency. So he's very efficient. Mm. Why? Because every other time you go about doing your work, you are efficient. Mm -hmm. And now it becomes a part of you. Mm -hmm. So be very, very consistent. Because okay. you never know who's watching and mm. when they are watching. Mm. The key decision maker might come in on the day when you're sloppy. And you will not be able to tell them you say, no, I was consistent yesterday. Oh, you should have come yesterday. You would have found me <laughs> on my best game. Yeah. No. So you want to be consistent. What about connections? The Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my connections, the Trinity. The okay. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. But, 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 but you, 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 you are one of the people that, uh, mm -hmm. the president, he's a president, right? Um, Shulufe <laughs> Tayali. <laughs> wrote about okay, yes. an article about you mm -hmm. uh, about the service that you gave i think you gave me a service right uh yes i did and then he he wrote an article about mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, did, did you see that coming no absolutely not mm -hmm. um I, I never saw that coming it came totally out of the blues mm -hmm. it was so humbling i must say that was the first article ever written about me yeah, yeah. and it was so long <laughs> <laughs> it was so long and it was so humbling. I was humbled by people who are going to reaffirm, mm. who, were, who were reaffirming what he had alluded to. Yeah. Them saying, yes, I have interacted with her mm. and she, she, she gave me such and such a service. Mm. It was pleasant to read. Mm. I was so grateful and I remain grateful for that article. Thank you. Don't you think that contributed to your promotions and, and your fame? I think it did. Yeah. I will not take anything away from it. Mm. I think it did. Okay. Yes, it really came as a bonus. It, it came out as a bonus, yes. Because now I know uh, recruiters use a lot of avenues yeah. when recruiting or when yeah. they want to make a decision about a particular candidate mm. and I know that social media is one of the platforms that they may choose to explore just mm. to see who you are and what yeah. you're about so if yeah. they're able to make that search mm. and then be able to read such kind of a story yeah. they might be compelled to actually consider you and shortlist you for 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 the job Krista, Krista. yes now, diving uh, a bit deeper into service, uh, mm -hmm. in Zambia, where do you think we are in terms of customer service? Okay, so in Zambia, from the analysis that I have made, mm. we have a long way to go. Okay. Yes, I will say we have a long way to go. What's the problem? Um, it's the, it's the inconsistencies. So you've got certain organizations mm. which are really trying to push the service agenda. Mm -hmm. And then you've got others where those conversations are not being had. Mm -hmm. What makes me say that? It's a kind of service that you get perhaps when you go in a store where people seem not to be very, very concerned. Yeah. So I am very convinced that more training mm -hmm. needs to happen mm -hmm. so that we can even the, the platform. Okay. Yes. So the, the solutions that you, that you think mm -hmm. uh, should be implemented is training? Yes, training, uh, training and also we would need it to trickle from the bottom, you know, from the top going up, mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, from the bottom going up and again from the top going down. Okay. So it, it really can't be a one-way channel, no. Mm -hmm. You'd have to get feedback from the people at the bottom, like what are the people on the ground dealing with? Yeah. Does the decision maker at the top know what the people, um, the, the, the gatekeepers, the mm. challenges that the gatekeepers are facing? Mm. Are they also including that? Mm. Are they including the element of customer service in the policies that they are making? Mm -hmm. In the processes, in the policies, is customer service embedded in those things? Yeah. Yes, so it's something that needs to be 
it needs to be pushed the service agenda needs to be pushed be it training actually training is very very critical i believe at organizational level i've had conversations with some organizations to hmm. ask have you ever had a customer service training and they say no so if the organization <laughs> fails to see the yeah. training need yeah then we have a problem there okay mm -hmm. great stuff um S service in Zambia, I think, mm -hmm. like you said, it's it's very inconsistent. It's inconsistent, yeah. Do, do we have a lot of people like you who mm -hmm. are into this space that are coming up to try and teach us mm -hmm. and, you know, mod mm -hmm. stuff concerning these issues? Uh, yes, uh, yes, we do. And especially now, mm -hmm. that is something that I am doing. I know there are people that I look up to. Yeah. Uh, the likes of uh, Emmanuel Mkula and his wife. Mm -hmm. So I know he runs um, Excel Excel training. Yeah. He's a phenomenal person and they are not, they, they are so willing to share. I have had those in interactions with them mm -hmm. because this is something that they have been doing for a while now yeah. before I started venturing into it. But I remember me and them just having a sit down yeah. and they were able to just pour out and just add to me as a person and that mm. was very very encouraging okay yes great stuff now service is it inborn or people are trained to be best service customer service agents okay uh, i'll say both yeah yes i'll say both for some yes uh, i can say inborn those people who are naturally friendly perhaps nice like me <laughs> yes naturally friendly yeah. it's yeah uh, their people skills are top notch yeah and they easily interact with people mm -hmm. and they actually draw energy from having such kind of meaningful interactions yeah and then you have those who seemingly don't really have much knowledge about it it's not something that comes naturally or easily and now those ones would now fall in the category that needs to be trained okay yes okay great stuff mm -hmm. uh what what inspires your write-ups on facebook okay so um, i will be very honest and i've always said this to say my story would be incomplete mm. if i didn't include the god factor mm -hmm. yes so um the Holy Spirit would inspire me to write. <laughs> okay. I hope that doesn't sound cocky, but it's the truth. Yeah. Because if you go through my work, the stuff that I posted um, even years back, mm -hmm. I draw some of that inspiration from scripture, mm -hmm. others from like real life uh, situations, Situation, yeah. experiences that I have maybe personally encountered, yeah. or situations that other people have encountered and mm -hmm. we got to share about it. Yeah. So all those just um, happen to be muses for, for my write-ups. Okay. Yes. Great stuff. Um, you, you, you look so decent, you know, organized, mm -hmm. this <laughs> corporate lady. Mm -hmm. have, have, you, have you had your bad moments as a girl child, you know, drinking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. clubbing, <laughs> men? Mm -hmm. have, have you had <laughs> such experiences? Yes, I have had. So the assumption now is that you're born again, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before that was, can you can you share a bit? Okay. Yes. Um. Yes. The clubbing. I remember the <laughs> the college days. <laughs> yeah. No need in hiding. Yes. Yeah. The partying. Yes. The drinking. Yeah. And the like. And yeah. also, men. Not a lot of men had <laughs> one boyfriend. <laughs> well, yeah. At the time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, pretty much the um, the learning curves, your self discovery, yeah. just you exploring. Okay. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and you you are done exploring. Yes, I am done exploring. <laughs> <laughs> you grow up. <laughs> I've grown. So, so when did you when, when when did you when did you get born again, or when 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 at, what was your transformation point? Transformation point. Mm. Okay, so I, I grew up in a home where prayer was not foreign. Okay. Like my parents are very, very prayerful. Okay. So that's definitely something. So even me, like diverting a bit, diverting a yeah. bit uh, prodigal son yeah. style. You still had the seed. <laughs> yes, like it's still in you. Like all those moments that will take you from 
Sunday school mm -hmm. and the like somehow it's it's inculcated in you mm -hmm. so in as much as you're doing all those things on the back of your mind yeah. you have this mm -hmm. awakening about who you are yeah and knowing to say there's more in you there's yeah. more in you and like you need to put yourself together yeah yes yeah, so it's gradual it wasn't a one day process <laughs> microwave generation no yeah. it wasn't it took time like one minute you're up the next minute you're down but yeah. now like you just fully i live in that awareness of who i am mm. and just also being very aware to say i'm god's tool i'm god's instrument so there are certain things that i have to shy away from you know mm. where you get to say okay no this i can't mm. i can't walk into into these territories and the like okay mm -hmm. as a leader what would you say is a leadership style like okay so um jonathan i will say transformational leadership mm -hmm. so i will share with you something that i heard my father say yeah. a while back mm. i remember we were having a conversation about leadership and this is a man who's given me a book to read about leadership yeah. and the like the the John Maxwell book mm -hmm. and the like so for him this is how he defines leadership so he says leadership is leading other people mm -hmm. lead themselves mm -hmm. so i choose to embark on that uh, transformational leadership walk or path yeah. Yeah. why because i don't want to be a kind of leader that is breathing down your neck yeah. and micromanaging people mm -hmm. that is not my style i would rather lead by influence mm -hmm. where i share the overall picture mm -hmm. or the overall vision of where we want to go yeah. and then i dissect that overall plan and divide it among us the team members that i work with also the other thing which i have noticed that works is mm -hmm. you involving your team as you are making decisions Decision. because it's so easy for them to get buy in instead of you going to make those decisions yeah. in and isolation then you just come and say okay so <laughs> today <Yeah. laughs> we're going to be doing abc and you yeah. know so at least let them feel a part of the team mm -hmm. where you're able to or to bring them on board and most of the times they have brilliant ideas yeah, that true. actually make the the dream work Powerful. Yes. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. What would you say are your core values? Okay. So for my core values, hard work. Mm. Don't be lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be lazy. Like yeah. hard work, definitely. That's something that I live by. Also consistency. I am big on consistency mm -hmm. because that's how if it, if if you want to build anything, you would have no. to be consistent. Mm. We can draw an example from. I know you love lifting weights and the like. So. <laughs> yeah. If we are able to see the transformation that happens to the body mm. because you are in the gym yeah. every week. Yeah. If you drop the ball, yeah. it will reflect yeah. Yeah. on your body to mm. say, okay, this person has dropped the ball. Mm. So mm. the same, applying the same principle yeah. to various segments of your life. Yeah be consistent be hard working and just go the extra mile mm. that's my value like you should leave that signature yeah leave traces of excellence yeah. wherever you go great stuff yes what would you say are your driving forces in life my driving forces mm. i want to die empty yeah i want to die empty i think you and i were chatting before the show and yeah. i was telling you about something that I heard from the late Dr. Miles Monroe. Yeah. He was such an amazing teacher. Yeah. He really had so much depth. Yeah. So I remember once listening to a short teaching that he gave about the cemetery being the richest, the richest place. place. Yeah. Why? Because in those tombs lie movies that never yeah. made it to the cinema books books that never make, made it to the songs book, guys to the bookshelves <laughs> songs that never met the airwaves yeah. and all those things so i remember hearing that and just asking myself say okay what what is my purpose what was mm. i created for where where or who am i supposed to impact where am i supposed to make a difference so it's by you pouring out. So mm. I live by that. Live full, just want to die empty. Yes. Everything. By the time I go, mm. I should die empty. Good. Yes. Talking about purpose, mm -hmm. would you say this is your purpose? Absolutely. How did you know or how did you discover it? Well, I must say it took time. Mm -hmm. It really took time. For the longest time, I didn't know what my purpose was. Mm -hmm. I remember I would wake up. Yeah 
go for work mm. and knock off and go back home. Mm. Wake up, go for work, just the same, the routine. same, the same routine mm. until, until I, you know, I remember I was still taking you back to Mosman. So I said something that you want to correct. Yeah. That there lies your purpose. It's a burden. Yes, like it's a burden. So, like I will walk in a store mm. and maybe just see someone, maybe being fidgeting on their phone while they are turning to a client, or maybe they are chewing gum, mm. and they are just, they are not being their best. Like it <laughs> agitates me. I'm yeah. like, I will be there to say, oh no, that's, you're not supposed to do that. Like I'll mm. literally start advising someone. So okay, yeah. maybe I wait for the person to go. I'm like, oh hey, it would be nice mm. if you can look the customer in the eyes as you're talking to them. Mm. At least let them know that you're focused on them and, and not your phone. You can browse mm. much later. So yes, it would burden me. Yeah. But I didn't know how how to get there until February last year. Okay. Yes, until February last year when I really had this burden to start writing. Mm. So I started writing. I said, okay, if I am so concerned about customer service, what am I doing about it? How yeah. am I making a difference? Yeah. Am I sharing what I have learned through the years or am I still holding on to it? Mm. So I said, okay, it's time for me to now release it. So mm. I started writing about customer service and with those stories came new doors yeah. that I never knew existed, that I never knew would open. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and I guess that's the reason why you also, you know, give birth to your company now, you yes. know. Yes. Can you talk about it? Yes, absolutely. So um, from the write-ups, like yeah. I said, came requests mm. from different companies requesting me to facilitate customer service training for their members of staff. Wow. Yes. So I now registered an entity called Kutowa Consulting. So it's a Tubuka yeah. name, which means beautiful. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes, yes. It's a Tubuka name that means beautiful, beautiful and bright. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so I want service providers to live a beautiful and bright experience with the people that they serve. How many tra trainings have you done so far? Ten. I am so grateful. <laughs> How much have you made from those? <laughs> Let's talk after the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm great so stuff. Grateful. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. So you've done ten trainings already. Yes, I have. Great. And and um, uh, how are the fees? <laughs> You look expensive. <laughs> I am very passionate about service, so yeah. I am open for, for negotiations. Okay. Yes. Um, they depend, depending on the crowd as well. We've got individual rates. We can share an invoice with yeah. you. <laughs> yes, but no, it's nothing to, nothing to leave a hole in the pocket. Definitely, okay. it's an investment that one would want to make, mm. especially if they are concerned about empowering their staff and just um, ensuring that customer service is... Yeah, just to ensure that customer service is being practiced in that place, yeah. that cl clients are, are, are satisfied, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. great stuff. Now, I've seen you scale from one position to the other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What would you say is your biggest ac accomplishment so far? Okay, so my biggest accomplishment, I would say, would be the birthing of the same Kutua Consultant mm. because it's not... I know the accolades, yes, yeah. do brighten someone's day to say, mm. okay, I received this uh, certificate, I received this, I received that. But if it starts and ends with you, mm. I don't think it would be the greatest. Yeah. But rather something that you can spill over yeah. to the next person. Yeah, value addition to other value people. Value addition to other people. Mm. So if I'm able to share my my service journey with people mm. and then have that make an impact in yeah. their lives yeah. then that uh, of course is going to be very very fulfilling and so for me i would say that's my most cherished accomplishment awesome awesome yes. mm -hmm. and what did you say has been your biggest failure and how do you learn from it mm, okay biggest failure there's a project i embarked on yeah it didn't go so well yeah. because of delegation yeah. Yes, this is outside work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's something I wanted to embark on, but I wasn't on the ground to see it through, and I didn't go on my own fact-finding mission. Well, what was this project? That was me trying to grow groundnuts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, unfortunately, the field was deserted because I was relying on intel from my neighbor to 
tell me, okay, I know the, the rain pattern had not been the best, mm. so I called before going there mm. to just get her view of how the crop had performed. Mm. So she tells me to say, no, the, you can barely see the groundnuts, they've barely come up, yeah. they've barely germinated and the like. So I'm like, okay, uh, why waste more time going there to weed yeah. and all those yeah. things yeah. that are f supposed to come there after? Mm. So I just stayed home and forgot about it. Mm. So on this random day, I... I go to the field with my friend mm. and we're taking a tour mm. and line by line we could see the groundnuts <laughs> competing with the weeds. <laughs> it was yeah, it was embarrassing because yeah. I had people work on it, plant, get the seedlings and all. Mm. But that was a that was a failure. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most important thing you've learned in life so far? Okay. Mm, gratitude. Mm. Gratitude. I have learned to be grateful. Yeah grateful even as you wait because yeah. I know many times we tend to downplay even the blessing that we currently have yeah. perhaps you get a job and this is what I say mm. even like the customer service ask someone why are you cranky mm. why do you mishandle clients and they say I've been doing this job for five years yeah. and I'll ask five years from what were you doing five years ago mm. I was not working mm. then I would ask to say okay so the moment you are not working did you hope for a job did yeah. you apply for a job they yeah. say yes so why has the thing that was a miracle then yeah. become a pain point now <laughs> <laughs> and now you're spilling that pain over to the customers yeah. because they're not grateful so yeah. gratitude has been able to see me through great stuff yes and, and I, I'm sometimes a, a victim of that. When I've done something for a long time, mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. I want something new. Mm -hmm. So I tend to, you know, not deliver mm -hmm. excellently mm -hmm. on that particular issue because I'm looking forward. But now I've learned that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I should be grateful because at least grateful. I've got something, right? Yes. Awesome. Yes, yes. Awesome. Now, uh, if you could turn back the time and speak to the 18-year-old Liz, mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. did you tell her? child <laughs> I would tell her um, to be confident mm -hmm. and to be self-aware mm -hmm. because if you don't know who you are yeah. a lot of people can point you in any other direction okay. because you don't have that self-awareness okay. but once you know who you are early mm -hmm. it's easy for you to remain committed and focused because you know who you are you know what you want you know where you want to go mm -hmm. so now you just start looking at other prerequisites of what can take you there okay. but not knowing because someone can just come and say jonathan yeah this mm. and you go with the flow but if you're not even if they were to come to you and tell you yeah this mm. you will be able to politely say no that's not who i am yeah and that's not where i'm trying to go mm -hmm. so you won't be easily swayed okay yes how do you discover who you are so for me, I've told you, I can never tell my story without <laughs> <laughs> the power team, and that is yeah. the Trinity. Yeah. Uh, so for me, that has been that has been very pivotal for my self-discovery. Mm -hmm. So it is through prayer, it is through meditation, it is through listening to the Word of God that I have been able to discover who I am. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and you were telling me, you were sharing with me before that mm -hmm. you never used to be confident in school. Yes. And I was asking a question, mm -hmm. guys, like, how? <laughs> Look at all this beauty. Someone is mm -hmm. not confident in, in themselves. Mm -hmm. o -o why was that so? Okay, so I'm going to be very candid. I remember um, growing up, mm. uh, grade 7, mm -hmm. I actually didn't make it to grade 8. Really? Yes. I was like 7 points shy of the cutoff point that was, that was put mm. in that particular year. Mm. Okay, seven points shy. Wow. Yes. So that just shook like everything in me. And this is me, a young girl. Yeah. And you've not made it. Mm. So now your parents are going to literally look for a place for you. So no, at least the, the difference isn't yeah. too much yeah. and all those things. Mm. So from there now came the self-doubt, mm. then the lack of confidence. Mm. Okay, like, okay, I'm, I'm, am I intelligent? No, I'm not intelligent. If I was intelligent, yeah. I would have cleared, but yeah. I didn't clear. Yeah. But I am just so glad that come grade nine, I was mm. able to excel. And from there, it's yeah. been upward. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could have dinner with three people, mm -hmm. dead or alive, okay. who would they be and why? Okay. I'm compromised on this one. <laughs> Bishop T.D. Jakes. Mm. 
obviously. And his beautiful wife, Sarita. Okay. I love those two. Mm. I love those two. So that's that's two. Then the third person. Mm. Um, local person. I would love to have dinner with the first lady. Okay. Yes. She's she inspires so, you. Yes, she's so elegant. She's poised. She's calm. Yes, <laughs> I would want to have a conversation <laughs> with her. <laughs> it would okay. be awesome. Now there are a lot of people out there who are doing the same things that you do. You know, mm -hmm. customer service. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what do you think has made you exceptional, mm -hmm. outstanding? Mm -hmm. The extra mile. The extra mile. Okay. I'm extra. You're going extra. Yes, I'm extra. I, Even I, on this <laughs> interview, you just, just no. came extra. <laughs> I'm extra. I always, I always go the extra mile. Hmm. So I'm, I'm constantly looking at the status quo and hmm. wanting to go above and beyond it. Okay. Yes, thinking outside the box, I'm um, attaching the human factor, mm. the emotional factor, even as I'm delivering a service. Yes, establishing a rapport with a client mm. and just being very, very thoughtful. Like you're trying to think by all means to say, okay, what else can be done? Okay. Even things that haven't been done or things that are not being practiced in the industry. But so I'm looking at those things, constantly looking for the gaps and mm. then filling them up. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. what's, what's your favorite book of all time? Okay, so my favorite book again, So by Bishop Chitty Jack. I, I know he, he speaks to my spirit. I love him so much. Yeah. I do. I and you're confirming so that you think maybe God sent him to you? He yes. He has called for you? Yes. Among us, the people that God anointed that man of God for, I yeah. most definitely know that I, I make the list. Hmm. He's been able to. <laughs> <laughs> I make the list. I make the list, okay? I, I do make the list. Hmm. I am so glad that he accepted the call of God nice. upon his life. I don't miss the service, be it midweek. I will yeah. tell you what they preached last week. Serious? Yes, I, I love it so much. Wow. Yes. Now, as we are winding up with mm -hmm. the interview, I know a lot of people, a lot of guys out there, mm -hmm. they're like me, you know, crashing okay. on you <laughs> and trying to find out, no. <laughs> is she married? Uh, are you married? Not yet. Okay. I'm not yet married. Uh, are you in a relationship? I neither do I nor agree. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, can you give me a sign? Right? Give me a sign right now. I'll give me a sign. <laughs> give me a sign right now. Okay, just so that. For now, I'm alone. For now. <laughs> for now, I'm alone. I'm <laughs> but, but, but why is that? Mm -hmm. Isn't it easy for you to just get any guy that you want? I mean, you, you're a boss. You're, Actually, I'm a boss. <laughs> you're beautiful. You have... Mm -hmm. uh, um, you've excelled in your career, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're, you're a woman of integrity, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. dignity, you are churchy. I <laughs> did churchy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So don't you get clients that mistake your niceness, nice mm -hmm. service for maybe you liking them? I have, uh, I have encountered such. How yes. do you respond to that? Uh, just respectfully set boundaries. Mm. Yes, and just let them know this is my job. Okay. Yes, this is my job. You're our client. I'm supposed to treat you a certain way. I'm supposed to speak to you a certain way. And that should not be miscon misconstrued for flirting or anything of that sort. So just it, boundary. Have, yeah. have you ever dated any of your clients? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Strictly business? <laughs> Strictly business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm yet to meet a client. Okay. I don't know, but no, not yet, hey? No. <laughs> that I've taken a liking to like, oh yeah, I think we can date. Mm. No, I've not yet met that client. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what? telling you. Okay, no, I wanted to say something, but I won't say it. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in your free time? So my free time, I cook. Yeah, so I have this uh, side business where I, I do fish, hmm. actually. So I do sell fish, okay. cooked fish and the like. Yes, yeah, so that's what I usually do on the weekends in my free time. Hmm. If I've got fish orders, if I'm not facilitating a customer service training, or if I'm not writing or spending time with family, I'm cooking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's your favorite meal? Mm, shima. I love shima. With? Ben Kubala and Katapa. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> Yes. Favorite music? Mavic City. Mm. Like gospel, like they are doing it for me. They, I love that music. Also country music. I mm. love country music. Okay. I have an old soul. Can you dance? No, I can't dance to save my life. 
<laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Great stuff. Yes. As, as we wind up with the interview, mm-hmm. to someone who looks up to you as an inspiration, mm-hmm. they, they would love to be an Elizabeth one day. Mm-hmm. What would you be? What would you be your, your words to them? Okay. Um, I would say hang in there. Hang in there. It's not always a smooth sailing. You will have moments where you are um, on the mountain tops, and then you also have moments when you're in the valley lows. Mm-hmm. But you just have to hold it together. Hey, okay? you have to. You just have to hold it together. Endure the season if you have to. Mm-hmm. Then the lessons that you need to learn. You might not have your dream job yet or your dream business yet. But keep at it, keep adding to yourself, yeah. keep improving yourself. We never stop learning, keep yeah. learning. If it's new skills, if mm. it's you interacting with people who have gone ahead of you, mm. don't be shy to ask for those meetings so that you can get to sit and just draw from those worlds of wisdom. Yeah. So never stop learning. I equally do that. I am still, I'm, I'm always researching. Mm. I'm always learning. And you're I'm, pursuing your master's now. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so keep learning and keep at it. And I always say this, don't leave God out of the equation. Be it your job search. Even when you hear me talk about the, 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 the jobs I have had, it's something where I'm applying for a job and I'm also praying. Like I'm having conversations with God about my job. I'm having conversations with God about the future. And you just see him piecing all things together and mm. him also assisting you to hold them together. Mm. So don't leave God out of it. Keep pushing, be consistent and you are unique. Okay, mm. so each and every person brings their own unique flavor to the table. Yeah. So as unique as your fingerprint is, mm. so are you. Mm. Yes. Powerful, powerful nuggets right there. This is Elizabeth, ladies and gentlemen. I call her the queen of <laughs> customer service and she'll be coming time to time, you know, to just uh, share with us uh, information and knowledge in this field and industry. But today we're talking about her life. Elizabeth, you're a busy lady. Mm-hmm. From here, you're going to a wedding, yes. you do training, and, but you made time mm-hmm. to just come and share your story on the platform. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful. Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know I've been planning this for, I don't know, how long now? For a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for a very long yeah, time. But finally, we made it. Yes, we did. And uh, so thank you very much for, mm-hmm. for showing up. Thank uh, you. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. You're an inspiration so much. to many, including me. I am so humbled. Yeah, you to forever hear that. be my boss, you know. Nah, we are colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> we are colleagues. Drop the, the titles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we do on the Real Life Show. We bring you the best. Thank you. And uh, see you in the next episode. Stay safe and God bless you. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Elizabeth. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching the Real Life Show hosted by Jonathan continue supporting him on the journey that he has embarked on to share different stories from different people from various walks of life thank you so much and good evening thank you